will be testing for ester, we would add one milliliter of hydroxyl amine hydrochloride. Methyl benzoid is my sample. And I'm using aldehyde as my negative test. We'll be adding six molar sodium hydroxide, about five drops. Give it a mix and then place them in a hot water bath. For the ester test, the test tube has been sitting in the warm water bath for a while. We'll let it cool down. So with the ester test, I let them cool to room temperature. Now I'm going to add about one milliliter of one molar ACL. And a few drops of ferric chloride solution. So it forms a nice red purple color. Let's try the negative test. So the orange yellow color of FeCl3 persists, which indicates this is a negative test. And this is your positive test. add one milliliters of freshly prepared ferrous ammonium sulfate solution. So I'm adding four nitro toluene as my sample. And for the negative test, I'm adding bromobenzene. Two drops of sulfuric acid, two molars on each. And then 20 drops of two molar potassium hydroxide in methanol. Let it sit for about five minutes and as you can see they both kind of look blue green at this point I will let it sit for a few minutes so for the nitro test we let it sit for about 10 minutes now we're going to take a look at the color so this definitely is a red brown color and this one is a green color this is a positive test or the blue green color is our negative test so we are going to do benzoic acid solubility test and beta naphthol is my alcohol sample And we'll be adding 5% sodium bicarbonate to each of these. You can clearly see there's gas evolution. We'll do the same with the beta naphthol. We'll do the solubility test of benzoic acid and sodium hydroxide and solubility test of beta naphthol and sodium hydroxide. So I'm adding 5% sodium hydroxide. Give it a mix. So as you can clearly see it is dissolved but there's no gas formation or bubbles. If you look at the beta naphthol it is not completely dissolved. So 
So we are trying to find the solubility of heptanone and toluene in concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is my heptanone and that's my toluene. So let's add the sulfuric acid. That's my sulfuric concentrated sulfuric acid. So it did show a color change and it's soluble. Let's try this toluene. So this is clearly forming two layers, but it does show some color change. We'll check the solubility of amines. My sample is aniline. My other sample is 2-heptanone, which is a ketone. We're going to add 5% HCl. So that's my aniline. Give it a mix. As you can clearly see, it is soluble. If you look at the ketone, you can clearly see the heptanone formed two layers. So it's insoluble in 5% ACL. So we are going to do elemental analysis. Bilston test is to detect if there's a halogen in the if there's a halogen present in the molecule. So we have to preheat copper wires. So I'm using two copper wires, one for my sample, one for the negative test. So I'll heat it, heat both of them and cool it. Okay, this has some contamination which already shows the green coloration. So I'm discarding this. So this one is clean. So I'm in using benzyl bromide. So it does show the shooty flame because it's aromatic. And then we see the blue-green flame clearly. So for my negative test, I'm using toluene. Do you see the expected shooty flame? This one shows more of an orange color and has no halogen. So we are going to do silver nitrate test on allyl bromide. So benzyl bromide is my sample. And bromobenzene for my negative reaction. We're going to add 10 drops of silver nitrate in ethanol. As you can clearly see, there's a pale yellow precipitate with the benzyl bromide confirming it's a silver silver bromide then that's my negative test with no precipitation so we'll be doing sodium iodide test and my reagent is sodium iodide in acetone I'm going to add 15 drops in each test tube Going to add benzyl bromide as my sample. And bromobenzene for my negative test. So as you can see, clearly there's a precipitate formation with the benzyl bromide. So we are going to try ignition test with aromatics. Uh, using toluene as my aromatic sample. So I'm going to add a drop on the spatula and then burn it. So 
So the shooty flame indicates aromatic. So for my negative test, I'm using cyclohexene. I'm using cyclohexene. So as you can see, it burns, but there's no shooty flame on the top. So we'll be doing unsaturation test with cyclohexene. And for a negative test, I'm using an alcohol, 2-butanol. I'm adding 10 drops of solvent, which is dichloromethane. Now I'm going to add my reagent, which is bromine in dichloromethane or methylene chloride. So pay, pay attention while I add my bromine water. As you can see, it, it decolorizes immediately. If I do the same thing with my negative test, if I add a couple drops, so this has been decolorized because it's a uh, alkene and this is a uh, alcohol which did, did not decolorize the bromine color. So we'll be doing unsaturation test, Bayer's test, which is cheminophore test. So cyclohexene is my sample. I'll add a few drops. For the negative test, I'm using toluene. I'm going to dissolve it in acetone and then add cheminophore solution. So the Camino Fork solution color should disappear if there's unsaturation. And as you can see, the pink purple color disappears. So that's the pink purple color, which when you add to the solution, disappears to form the brown color. So that's my negative test. Let's try this one. As you can see, this color persists, which is a negative test. When you compare these two, 